Welcome to Two Chicks Talk Writing. I'm Isabella. And I'm McGee. Welcome to our show. Writers Groups Part 2. Should you join? How do you join if you want to? So that brings up a good question because, so why are you joining a writing group or a critique group then? Are you doing it for the camaraderie? Are you doing it for some type of, you know, the socializing that comes with talking about books? Are you doing it to be around like-minded people? You know, is your intent to get something out of it or just kind of chit chat about books and that's book club, in mm-hmm. my opinion. That's mm-hmm. book club. Mm-hmm. If you want a book club, join a book club. But um, if you join a writing group, how much chatty is too chatty? Mm-hmm. And for me, it would be chat all night long is fine. But <laughs> unless you're supposed to be sprinting and we do get out the timer and we do try to get on it. Yeah, we, tr- we do have a little element. That there are some people who you can tell enjoy more of sharing their day than... Some of the other folks would just like us to, you know, get on with it, get on with it, which, um, so we try to respect that. I think that that's probably one of those other, you know, expectations or or things that you should write down. What is it you want out of this? Mm -hmm. Are you looking for feedback? Are you looking just to get some words down on paper? Is there a social element to this that you want to be built into it? You know, and, and I'm sure there are probably groups out there that say, okay, we'll tap, chat for the first 10 minutes and then I'm going to set the timer. Everybody, you know, like a Pomodoro, everybody go. Right. And, uh, you know, boom, it goes. Mm-hmm. And do you, have you, you know, is there any expectation that people chat afterwards? Do they, do you chat about your writing? Usually do, you know, I might say, well, how many words did you get today? You know, what are you writing about? Oh, I'm writing that mystery novel. I come back to that story again or, you know, whatever. So I think people do share a little bit about what they're working on, but not exactly um, what their struggles are with it or where they're stuck. So for us, it isn't really that. You know, I think some people are just joiners. You know, they like to be... I like to say they're in this writing group. It makes them more of a, of a writer in a way, especially when you're starting off, you don't feel like much of a writer. It took a long time for me to, to own that. Yeah, that describes me. I can use that word to describe myself now as writer, author. It took a while. I think you bring up a really good point because I think for some people who you know have a fear of missing out, FOMO, Mm -hmm. Um, they join groups that they are worried they're missing out on something or they're going to, they're not going to get to be part of the secret sauce or part of the secret society of, of, uh, writing groups or sprinting groups or things like that. I have not been successful. I will say this right now in sprint groups because either I forget about them or, I don't have time, or I thought it was going to be something that it wasn't. And I knew to take myself out of it. I knew to say, because a lot of authors put it out there, hey, I'm doing a sprint group this month. You want to be part of it? I'll add your name. And they post it on Facebook saying sprinting now, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. And when do you know when it's time to get out? Well, you bring up a good point. And I think people like yourself that work, at least one full-time job, if not other secondary jobs on top of the first full-time job. Um, Time is precious. You know, your schedule is going to be much more uh, difficult to squeeze into something like that. And I, I think for people like myself who mean to get to it sooner or later, it helps me to actually have a time to force myself to do it. And on the other side of that coin, I can become so obsessed that I sit in the chair for six hours straight. I also need a timer to ding and tell me, time to get up and walk for a few minutes. You need to write for 45 and wander to the house for 10, and then you get to sit back down and write some more. So knowing your own writing style, maybe that's another topic too. (laughs) So when 
when does a writing group become a crutch? Mm. There was a guy in the one writing group I was in that had been working on his manuscript for 15 years. And wow. I felt like maybe he was never going to be satisfied with that book and no amount of feedback from the rest of us that this is great was going to be enough to get him to move off of center and send it to a publisher or editor or something. So. so do you think he was just using the writing group as a crutch to continue kind of in this malaise? Yeah, I think so because, aha, see, he said he didn't like that top hat in that scene and I need to change it to a derby. Well, you know, you hear what you want to hear too, I suppose. Sure, sure. See, I could see writing groups becoming a crutch thinking, oh, I can't write any other time than when I'm in my group. That's my time. That's, that's when I'm going to write. I'm not going to, uh, that's, that's, I've blocked that time. Some writers get so entrenched in blocking times and, you know, that the sprints or the writing group becomes that piece of it that, okay, I've done my writing. I, I'm done. I can go on. And, you know, it's kind of like working out when you block 30 minutes to go work out and you work out and you're like, okay, good. I can go eat that Snickers and, and have a soda now. Cause I worked out maybe not the same premise, but you know, you, you block that time and you can't do anything else. You got to do it. And now that you've done, you're like, I, okay, I, I don't have to think about it anymore. I, I guess that doesn't seem to apply for me because I feel driven to tell stories. I've spent my whole life as some would say avid exaggerator, but I consider it to be, um, you know, storytelling. So I think I just have stuff banging in my head and I get, I have four books going at the same time all the time. I've always got a thing being plotted, a thing kind of half done and something closer to done that I'm sick of and I'm going to put away for a month. And everyone has their own process. So I guess if, to me, if somebody feels like they have to hurry up and get it done, maybe this is the wrong, I don't want to say hobby because it can be a job, but I mean, if you approach it as professional commitment, maybe that's not the gig for them. Maybe they should take up cycling. <laughs> So let me ask you this. What's the difference between a critique, a, a critique group and beta readers? Okay, that's a good question. I, I think of beta readers as uh, like you go on Facebook and there's a beta reader group, which is one that I kind of eye suspiciously, but often there are people who just read ferociously and, and like free books. They're willing to give the effort to give you feedback. So I appreciate that very much. And we all say, sure, I'll look at your book. And then we get so busy, we never do. And then we feel bad. So that, that happens to everybody. But I think of beta readers as reading larger chunks, if not close to finished material, to be able to look at the whole story arc, the whole character development versus a critique group that you might read sections or character descriptions or a certain fight scene to see if this is real to you or whatever. I, I think of the a critique group as being really zeroed in on a specific question about your story rather than reading 70,000 words to tell you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so when is a good time in your opinion to join either of these groups? The beginning, when you've published a book, any time, I think anytime really, because uh, I think a lot of new writers are drawn to the in-person, you know, writing clubs at the library. And occasionally there'll be a few um, veteran writers that come in because they like the social aspect of it, circling back to why are you in this group in the first place? And people who've written for a long time, there's a number of people in different little social media groups that we live across literally the world. And we encourage each other. We post each other's books when they launch. We rarely read each other's stuff, but it could happen. This kind of depends on how tightly you define writing group, I guess. So I know we're going to get this question. I know someone's going to say, well, how do I find a writing group? How do I find a critique group? Or how do I find beta readers? What's your advice to them? 
other than Google that. <laughs> Google that, yeah. No, um, I found beta readers on Facebook. I just, well, I did Google. <laughs> Take that back. But yeah, you, uh, you plug in your genre into Facebook and writers and some different combinations of words and you will find a whole group suggested for you column will pop up and, you know, go onto their page, see how active they are, see what they seem to be doing and, you know, give it a shot, send a few people uh, stuff. But I, my rule of thumb is if I send out six copies to beta readers, I'll get three back. So don't, don't expect that everybody has the time to do everything you want to do. And sometimes they might just be way too busy or they really didn't like it and they just don't want to crush you. So it, I suppose it could be both. Well, that's not a critique group that's, then, is that's, it? No, it's not. So, and then finding a critique group, again, it'd be, you know, looking online and trying to find those other people. But, you know, when I first posted on my personal Facebook page, I was starting to work on a manuscript. Well, three friends of mine sent me messages. Oh, you have to meet so-and-so. They write too. And two of those people were pretty busy with their own thing, but one of those persons did spend at least several messages back and forth of talk to this person, you might join this group, you might try this, try this on Twitter, and just shot me a few directions that gave me a place to get my toe in. And then once you had other people, you saw their messages and stuff, then, you know, then you can decide, okay, yeah, these are people that I, you know, I want to hang with. How do you find those sprint groups then? Do you just do a sprint call? Do you post something? And, and do you post something for beta readers? Do you post something for critique groups saying, hey, I'd like to join a critique group. Anybody know of one? Or, hey, I need some beta readers. Send mm-hmm. me, and have, you know. Have done all of those things. Some of the best beta readers I've gotten have been friends of friends of friends kind of thing. So don't be afraid to throw that net out there and to say, Hey, you know, I'm looking for somebody that likes to read X, Y, Z. And so what about if you're in a critique group that has, should it be a genre specific critique group? Should you be in a critique group for mystery and yours is a romance group? Is that going to work? Is that going to fit? Is writing just writing or is it different? I think it's different. I did join a group that wrote a very different kind of genre um, than I did. And yeah, you can be with the wrong group for sure. I sat next to an author that had a number of books out at, at, at uh, a book convention and it was talking about something about craft. And she said, well, are you in a writing group? Whatever. I started chatting and she, and she's like, you are in the wrong group, honey. <laughs> and that was the best you advice. That was the best advice uh, I had gotten was you do not have to stay with that motley crew you have discovered. So when you, what, what, what advice would you give to somebody when you get a critique that you didn't expect that kind of, you know, and I know some people like to shred other people to make themselves feel better or to show how knowledgeable they are or how well-spoken or well-written they are. What would you say to somebody who got just some scathing critique? I have been there. I think the first step is to, as much as it, it seems impossible, to not take it personally and to realize that there are different levels of editing, I guess I would say, story evaluation. Um, are they trying to do it all for you or, okay, so if they're trying to do it all, there's going to be a lot of red on that page. So try to consider where they're coming from. Are they trying to rewrite your story or are they trying to say, I'm lost here or really love this way you talked, you know, here, um, can we do more of that down here? Or, you know, those kinds of suggestions I find helpful. Once you get the, off the sting to go back and to find the silver lining and what they were trying to say to you, because at some level, even if they think there are smarty pants, they do know some things you don't know. So what can you take of it? And don't be afraid not to take their suggestions at whole. Cause there was a point in time where I, everything somebody said, Oh, I should change that. And then after a while I'm like, 
what am I writing by committee? This is crazy. I, I need to, I need to pick my lane and stay in it. Stay and, in it. You yeah. know, if, if I have a question about should this character do this or that, that's a different thing than having a survey about it. So. I think that's great advice. I know that uh, for some writers getting some critique, constructive criticism can do several things. It can get them very defensive. It can crush their spirit, depending on how it's presented. And then you have the flip side, oh, I got to change this right away. Mm -hmm. Instead of looking at it. And, and, and maybe it's sometimes in the way that it's delivered in, in how we talk about this. Whenever I, you know, I review a lot of stories, submissions to Sapphire. And some of them I will say to the author, especially if I think that they are a good storyteller. If I think that they're a good storyteller, I'll say right off the bat, you're a great storyteller. I think that you need some work in these areas. And here's, here's what I'm seeing as a writer, but as a publisher as well. I think what you said about, you know, kind of buffering or, or sandwiching, you know, those things, you say what you do really well, and then you can say, I think maybe you should consider changing this. I feel that as someone who is a writer, I know how easy it is to crush a spirit. And why do I say that? Because you can open up Facebook on any one given day and see an author complain about a one-star review and just write a whole diatribe about how they were wrong on this review. I can't believe it. I'm so crushed. And then you go to look at this, this book and it's got 25 great reviews and one one-star review. And that's how easy it is to crush. And so I think that, you know, you have to, like you said, have a thick skin in some areas. And as a critiquer, hopefully you are compassionate enough to remember when you were first starting to write. And what that was like. So you said that you don't join critique groups. What do you do when you have a piece that you're working on and you feel like there's some feedback that you would like from other people? How do you, how do you get that? Oh, beta readers. Beta readers. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm of the get defensive group sometimes when I send my writing out there and somebody says, <laughs> really? This sucks. I'm like, yeah, F you too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I turn you off the minute, the minute that happens. Right. And I know that about myself. I know that I'm turning them off because anything after that to me is irrelevant. Now I've thought, you don't know what you're talking about. So that's why I don't do critique groups. I don't know that I am of that ilk because the other piece of it is there's work involved on the flip side. Like you said, if they critique you, you have to critique them. Mm -hmm. And so I unfortunately don't have time to do that. And that's another reason, probably the biggest reason why I don't join them. It's also the reason I don't do sprints because I can't commit to that kind of time. And I always seem to screw it up on the few times that I've tried. Mm -hmm. And I've done NaNoWriMo once. And the stress of doing NaNoWriMo, knowing that you, you must put down at least 3,500 words a day, a day for a 50,000 word NaNoWriMo badge. I'm like, yeah, that ain't worth it to me. I'm sorry. <laughs> My life is too short to be stressed out that much. And some people like it. You know, it's that adrenaline pump. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it, becomes, it becomes almost a drug at some point for some people who love that stimulation and that. I got to get it done. I got to get it done. I got to get it done. Look, I work in education. I see students all the time who are those last minute adrenaline junkies trying to push that paper out to get it. And they've had two weeks to do it, but they wait until the last two days before it's due to do it. That's an adrenaline, you know, rush for some people. I like to take my cocktails in a different way. <laughs> <laughs> And now a tip of the day from the Writer's Toolbox. 
There's a feature in Microsoft Word that allows you to listen to the document. Okay, so if you open your Word document and look up in this corner here where it has the letter, and I click it, it comes up with a, a little sound bar box over here. So you can go back and forth in the reading, and then in settings you can check out how fast it's going to speak, and you can pick between different voices uh, that you would prefer to listen to. Then as you move through the document, you can hear the story being read as you read it, and it'll help you catch things like uh, words that are spelled correctly but the wrong version, like form instead of from, and it will help you catch uh, little grammatical errors as your ears hear them versus what your eyes see what they want to see. If you have something you want to hear us talk about, make some comments below. Check out our Two Chicks Talk Writing website at the number 2 chicks talk writing.com. You'll find all of our past podcast episodes there, as well as some tools and tips and freebies you can download. You can also check out our Facebook page, Two Chicks Talk Writing, and our Instagram at Two Chicks Talk Writing.